quick review of the AIM keypads. We have the K8, 2x4, M5 studs, 7 pin connector on the back, the K15, 3x5, so you get 15 buttons, the same M5 studs on the back, your 7 pin connector that lets you tie it into your system with these open systems. You can get a 2 meter or 4 meter connection cable, which is obviously easy to change the length on. You can clip it and strip it back. Here we have power and ground, can high and low. To program, you need the programming harness, USB to 7 pin, and then we have 12 volts, can high and low. The 12 volts lets you light the LEDs in the keypad so you can do all your testing. And the same thing, the CAN connection allows you to tie this into whatever system you're working with to see that those CAN outputs are working as you wanted. When we want to start configuring one of the AIM Open devices, we start in Race Studio 3 and in the gear icon for the configurations. I'm going to pick a new configuration. I'm going to do a K15 Open as our example, but it's basically the same for any of them. We can name this to whatever we want say k15 chiquita first rev keypad and then we can start going through and putting what we want now when we get into the keypad configuration we start on the buttons tab if you're going to have a can input to the k15 you would want to set that up now because we can use those for the button lights or anything else we want so in this example i'm going to come down and I'm going to pick that we have a max CCU. I'm going to say it's can one megabit. And now we have all these channels that are input into the K15. We can set this up with any custom can config, any can config that aim gives you in the thousands that it has available. And now we're going to hop back over to those buttons. So when we get into buttons, we have a few things we can do. The first one I want to look at is check it power on. What this does is it lights the keypad up when it turns on initially with the power start. This lets you know it's connected, it's got power and, and it works. It doesn't have to do that. That's a choice for you if you want to have that behavior or not. Totally dependent on how you set up your car and how you like to do things. When we get into the buttons, we can open it by double clicking or clicking on the gear icon for the setting it up. And when we get in, we're able to change the name. We can say this one I'm going to say is starter. And then we get to pick how the button's going to work. Is it going to be a momentary button on or off as we're holding the button, a toggle, that you hit it and it turns on just like a toggle switch or a multi-status that has multiple ways to have it activated. I like to think of a multi-status as sort of a rotary switch that it can be setting one, two, three, four, or we can put it back to zero or off or whatever that might be. A really neat feature with the AIM keypads is they have a lot of smart logic inside them and they manage all these functions. And because they do that, we can have it turn on at its last state if we wanted. Obviously for a starter, that'd probably be a pretty bad decision, but in other things like maybe lights or a configuration kind of thing, it'd be something that we do want, like a power mode. Um, so the next part we're gonna do on this one as a starter is we're gonna set up our LEDs and how it works. So it's a toggle switch. So it's only gonna be on or off when we're holding the button in, just like we want a starter switch to work. Then we can set our color to say green when the starter is equal to on. And this green is going to be continuous. We can set blinking if we want as well. So it could work almost as an alarm. Then we can also set it where it has to be verified for a certain amount of time. That might be nice if you want to have to have the color change after a signal is at a value for some amount of time so you don't get false alarms. Here, it's just going to be green when we hold the button in. I like to have a background color for my alarm or for my lights. I like to have a background color for my keypad buttons so that they're lit up and I can always see them really easy. So there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new output state and I'm going to make it white continuous. And here I'm going to set it to being always true. You might say if it's always true, isn't it going to override the green, but it won't because the topmost colors are the highest priority signified here. So now when we hit button, it's going to turn green. It's going to turn that status to on, or it'll always be white as our background. I'm going to save this one, move to the next button. So say button two, we want to say is our parking lights. 
Now in our parking lights, we want those to be on or off. We don't want to drive around holding that button. And they're simply going to be used as off or on. I don't want to have any sort of timing, but I am going to turn it so it holds the last value. So when I get out of the car, I'm not going to have to turn those lights on every time. It's going to be kind of automatic. Now, again, I'm going to turn the color to blue when it's on. I'm going to add another state, have it be white continuous, always true. So now it's going to be white. When I turn my lights on, it's going to be blue, and then it'll go back to white. A super way to set this. Let's go to a third button. And here we're going to do a multi-status. And with this multi-status, let's set this up like it was a wiper. So with that, I can now put labels on all my options. And I'm going to have four options here. I'm going to have off. I'm going to have an in speed. So it's going to give it a command that it could maybe run a square wave and be on or off, on or off. So we get that function. And then I'm going to have low and high. And in that, we get to pick what the short press leads to. So it's going to go from off to intermittent, intermittent to low, low to high, high to off. We can also use timing. And when we use timing, we get to pick the amount of time. So here, if you hold that button for half a second, it's going to go straight to high. And if you hold it another half second, it's going to go off. So maybe we want to set that. It'll go to low and then off. And if it's on high and you hold it in, it'll turn off. So now we can program how these buttons go through cycles. So maybe you're controlling an ECU power output for your engine. And in that, you could have it go from startup mode to a low boost to a high boost to a, a up boost or something. You can work that out how you want. And again, we set the colors in the same way. So I'm going to set maybe amber or high, add an output, make green or low. We can add another one, make this one say magenta or intermittent and one more where we can add white as always true. And now we have all of our power output states. Powerful way to put a lot of feed into the buttons and what they do. So when I save this, the last part I wanted to cover is we have brightness settings. And in those brightness settings, we can set how bright the keypad is. The default value here we have is 60. So we can choose from 0, 20, 40, all the way to 100. So maybe we leave that at 60. And now we can set it so that if we have our parking lights on, it becomes on. So now when our parking lights are on, this goes to 100%. You say, well, geez, maybe that's the wrong way. We can go back, correct our mistakes, set this to off, and say, I like them dimmed when it's bright out. And then we can say, okay, well, let's make them 20%. So we can go here, set our parking lights to on. So now it's going to default to 60. When our parking lights turn on, it's going to go to 20%. A very easy way to work with this. The final part that we set up with the keypad, the open keypads, is our can output. And you'll see that AIM does a lot of the work for you. And when we go in, it already is set up with IDs and the button states and the names that we have. The speed is already chosen for us because we have a can input that is set to one megabit. So the output is automatically set to one megabit. We can enable or disable the 120 ohm resistor. And if we click on the address, we can go in and change the address to anything we want. It can be 11 bit or 29 bit. We can set how many bytes we're going to use here. Obviously we want to use the full eight. The next line we use seven because we only have seven. We can check our endianness, whether it is big or little, and we can set the frequency of those outputs transmit when the value changes. So it's going to be steady and then it will transmit only when that value changes. 
And then in each one, we get to set it up that we can have our multipliers and our offsets if we want, how big the message is, and what it's actually sending out. A nice feature with this as well, if we have another field, we could always choose to work with the can input as well. So maybe we want to send out gear position on this. For some reason, we want to send it back and say we wanted to this. We can do that as well and add items to that output bus. So you see the K15 and the K8 have a lot of capabilities that are built into the keypad, something no other manufacturer does in the same way. So you don't need to handle all that logic inside of the ECU or a different PDM or some other component that you have. The logic's handled right in the keypad and it sends out the exact message that you can then act upon. It's a great way to do things and I hope it will help you out in one of your projects. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and follow along for more.